Broadcasting from the Unshackled Studios in Melbourne, this is Wilms Front, brought to you by theunshackled.net. Now here's Tim Wilms. Uh, my first featured uh, guest uh, for tonight, he's been busy uh, shaking his head uh, at uh, all of uh, my introduction. Uh, one of the unmask faces and will continue to be unmasked uh, face of the anti-lockdown movement. Uh, Craig Cole uh, operates the Facebook page No Consent for We Are Young and Free, which has uh, 5,000 Facebook likes. Uh, Craig, uh, welcome to the show. Seven, up to nearly 7,000 followers now, Tim. So yeah, it's really coming along. I think, yeah, I noticed the followers were, do we go by followers or likes? Oh, <laughs> The numbers bigger on followers, so we'll go with that, mate. <laughs> mm. Although they could be people who are just monitoring you. I said likes because they're the people who do yeah, like me. Yeah. I'm just have, having a bit of fun, mate, just putting a bit of lighthearted into this uh, seriousness of this matter. So, yeah. yeah. And having spoken to you previously, you are still an, an optimist despite everything that's going down and us entering another. Uh, unknown uh, tomorrow. I noticed that you describe uh, No Consent as a community education institution providing assistance, educating the community relating to the constitution, your lawful rights and exposing government corporate corruption. You mainly utilize your page for live logging from uh, your car. And I've noticed, and it's especially important, I've done it on this show, you uh, do it from your car as, car as well, is that the vast majority of people, they don't know what their rights are and think the lockdown restrictions are actually more draconian than they actually are. Uh, thank you, Tim, for starters, for having me, uh, for asking me to come along and um, apologies for taking so long to come on, mate. But, uh, um, and I hope all watching are well. Um, anyone watching for the first time who's 50-50 or dubious and well, um, watching on to um, sort of get a bit more information, which is what, you know, part of your page is no doubt about, Tim, to inform people that sort of are maybe what's going on here. Um, and the more hardened people like yourself and, and me that uh, are, are fully aware of what's happening. Um, now, just with the page, um, so I did start Facebook, have been limiting me for quite some time now. Um, so people are commenting that I don't, the no consent page doesn't come up on their feed. Um, and I used to do a lot of pre tape posts and upload them, but what I was finding, um, it would go from, you know, four or 5,000 views down to about maybe four or 500 views because they were limiting the reach there. So I decided to do more live posts. Now, the location of my house, the reception is not that good around here. So a lot of the live posts were breaking up. So I just said, well, I'll just do them in my car. It's more of a personal sort of feel anyway. And uh, the live posts generate a lot more views. So the whole point of the page is to get the message out there. The message, not my fat head, who wants to look at that on a regular basis, but um, you know, it's more about the message. So, I've got to you've got to think sitting in my car uh, at random locations um, is going to uh, hit more people, so that's what's more important. The message getting out is more important, mate. So, that's hence most of the posts from my car these days. So obviously you're you're driving around uh, quite a bit, and we're in the well the the, the second uh, stay at home order. Um, have you uh, had any uh, disturbances uh, while you've been driving around? Whatever it is you're doing. When you say disturbances, what do you mean by disturbances? Law, law enforcement asking where you are. On the very first. Now I'm just going to take you back uh, one thing to what you said earlier, I was listening and you raised some very good points and some things, I've just made a couple of notes. Now, they can't even make their own mind up. One minute it's this, ten minutes that, they take this down, they take that off. Where's the credibility? Where's the credibility? Now, they are wanting everyone to ruin their lives, take lives, the suicide rates in Victoria. We had the Victorian Health Minister come out last week and said we had a thousand deaths from suicide. And we've had 
uh, how many deaths in Victoria from suicides. So from uh, Corona. Corona. Oh, it what stands at 44 now. Okay. So I've had 44 deaths rest their soul, and they were mostly elderly yeah. people who were pre-existing illnesses. 70s, 80s, 90s, and even a 100-year-old died yesterday that, from coronavirus. It's a crockish, can I, yeah, it's, it's, I'll be careful with the language here. We all know it's BS. We all know it's, it's, it's people are driven by fear, and the media drives that fear. Now, the point what I was, I was making is the media can't even get their story straight because stage four restrictions, we've had stage four restrictions. Remember, it started stage two, and all, then it went to stage three, then we got released out to stage four. When they locked us down two weeks ago, that went the hot spot areas went back to stage three. So what the media is talking about, who friggin' knows? Because mm -hmm. they're getting their stages mixed up. The higher the number, the less restrictions. So I don't know what they're talking about going back to stage four. And if anyone wants to dispute me on that, just follow the process the whole way through how it's gone. And what we were told two weeks ago, oh, hot spots will be locked back into stage three. Well, then why are the media saying we'll get locked back into stage four? So it just shows the media and also let's not forget the grubby uh, report that Channel 7 ran on Saturday night using the uh, footage, file footage from the Italian hospital four months ago and airing it as if it was here in Melbourne on the weekend. That is... Oh, yeah, cool. let's let's have a look at... This is the... I've put the there screenshot up. CBS said it was New York in March 25. Uh, yeah. Sky News uh, UK said it was Italy March 22, and then 7 News Melbourne uh, said that this was a Victorian hospital. Well, they didn't actually say it was a Victorian hospital. They just put the graphic underneath it because they said... Oh. What, what was the... They said, uh, yeah, while they were talking about the so-called pandemic here, yeah. like it's they use mind games. To yeah. Manipulate. Have you Clearly, also seen the, the the dummies on ventilators? I've seen a few of those. This is Seven News Perth uh, last Thursday. I mean, if even the most ardent people that are bought into this, surely they have to look at that and start questioning. Surely, like. Uh, just excuse my voice too, by the way. I've been <clears throat> on the phone and talking all week. I mean, I even think I talk in my sleep these days, which is a scary thought. I just anyway. thought your voice was naturally husky. <laughs> no, it's just, it sounded bad. Look, I... <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> oh, everyone run and hide. I <laughs> oh, no. Isn't it just sad the way if you clear your throat out in public or manage to have a bit of a cough the whip around of the head's like you know it's like it's just really sad to see people's reaction that people are living in fear i actually feel sorry for them and sad for them that they're they're being mentally manipulated by the media to the point where they whip around in a panic if someone coughs in public i mean for god's sake that is really sad Really, really sad that someone can be intimidated that much by the fear the media drives. It's just astounding. Well, because people have, have coughed uh, randomly uh, th uh, 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 throughout time. Uh, I was just watching, this is a bit of a tangent here, that uh, quiz uh, BBC show about that millionaire contestant who allegedly cheated with, with coughing. And uh, we're, I was thinking when watching it, if this was 2020, everyone, uh, the whole studio audience would run away if someone was, was coughing. That just oh, goes. Attacks, there'd be hyperventilating, there'd be finger pointing, there'd be news reports, there'd be, oh, be drama, drama, drama. Channel set, like, I would really, and I know it's happening in the background, but we need to speed up the process because people need to be held accountable. And one of the things I'm big on is, do you understand tacit law, Tim? You would. Or well, explain it for the audience. <laughs> Thank you very much. So that's why I'm on here. So tacit law is basically your consent. Sorry, your silence is your consent. That's tacit law. So the government takes that is if you don't complain, your silence is your you consenting to what they're doing. That's any corporation. And don't forget the government is a corporation. We are run by a corporation. And people need to start understanding that. Statute law is the corporation's law. That's why it's called statute law. That's why we have two sets of laws. If anyone, has anyone ever wanted to think why we have two sets of laws? <laughs> like 
because it's the corporation's law. They're unlawful laws that go against the constitution. Well, they're not even laws. They're unlawful acts and bills. I mean, what's an act? An act's a show, isn't it? It's an act. Who plays in an act? Actors. It's all a fake. It's all a mirage. And, and I know it uh, goes against people's cognitive dissonance. Um, and it's because their whole belief system in what they believe to be true is being destroyed. They don't want to, they're not big enough and not courageous enough to put their hand up and say, hey, I may have been lied to here. I may have been taken for a fool here. You know, it's funny, isn't it, Tim? People say, oh, well, no one's going to get the better of me and I don't let take shit from anyone and all the rest of it, but people are happy to take shit from their government and be fooled by their government. Yeah, and <laughs> uh, we even have the, the worst aspect of all of this has been the what I call the, the snitch lines. And thankfully, oh. it hasn't been as bad this time, uh, but with the first lockdown, uh, it, uh, the, the snitch lines were getting ridiculous and uh, they've false created, calls. They've created a number. It's a one three one number. Apparently, no, don't give it. it out. Hey, don't give it out on the air. Oh well, no one watching this would bother calling it, would they? <laughs> I'm just saying, don't stay, don't don't, uh, don't spread <laughs> it around. Be my love, seriously. Give me some credit. <laughs> uh, but I've got to get that confirmed. It was in a meme, so I do need to confirm that. But it looks like there might be a number for people. Can you imagine? The people that would call that, like, hello, yeah, someone's not wearing a mask, come and get them. Like, mm. what, kind of, what kind of shallow, narrow-minded, um, like, what kind of sheltered life do you have to have to be one of those people? And if it so concerns you, people are out there living their life, uh, breathing the fresh air, if you're so scared of the virus, why don't you just self-isolate completely? Yeah, what, what Taiwan does, you know, Taiwan, who's had since this all started just over 450 cases in a population of 23 million and only seven deaths. Now, those were the figures last week. It may have gone up a little bit, but that was the last week. And what they did do is quarantine the sick and let everyone else, and everyone's showing any symptoms, they stay home. I mean, that is so easy, it is ridiculous. It is complicated because we're run by corrupt people because we're run by incompetent people. Corruption and incompetence aren't good bed bedfellows at all. So, I mean, look at this second wave. They haven't been quarantining the, the sick. I mean, the fact that you have healthcare workers and aged care workers, I... Uh, a lot of them are getting infected and then, well, giving it, uh, in, uh, giving it to the most vulnerable. Some of the well, workers the are even getting it in the, the community. So the vulnerable people in, in hospital and aged care are supposed to be quarantined. Uh, they're, they're not being properly quarantined, well, it, but the it, healthy it, it, are. Yeah, but what are they getting? Are they getting coronavirus or have they got the flu? Because as we know, the test kits don't test... The gentleman who invented the test kit himself, and this was for the SARS epidemic, Kerry B. Mullis. Kerry spelled with a K-K-R-A-Y B. Mullis, M-U-L-L-I-S, researching. And he passed away uh, apparently a couple of years ago, but before that he'd come out and said the test kits aren't for, now COVID wasn't around then clearly, but the test kits um, take a little bit of the sample and extrapolate it out. So it magnifies anything. So if that's contaminated, it magnifies that contaminant out as well too. They are not accurate. He said that. They are not accurate test kits. And this is what the World Health Organization are using for the numbers when they're not accurate. This virus is not a killer virus. It is just a bad case of the flu. That's all Well, it is. the flu does kill people as well. It killed 900 yeah. Australians last, last you know, winter. But we've we never do... feared the flu or locked down the economy. Exactly. Exactly. Now, all death is tragic. All death is tragic. But can't tell me Daniel Andrews has got no right and it is absolutely disgusting for standing up there all right just saying that he's saving lives by doing all this when we've had a thousand suicides and only just over 40 COVID deaths. That's not saving lives, mate. That's taking lives. Now, I know a lot about this because uh, I've worked in the community for the last 14 years, uh, running programs, helping young people, but also helping people, um, you know, mature age people with a lot of mental health issues as well too. 
So I have a lot of contacts and people contact me. Now, when this first happened, and I'm going to name the hospital. Oh, you've got to be careful. Oh, Boys, don't. Yeah. Well, I'll name it on my, on my life. Um, so because... Right now, Tim, the gloves have to be off, mate, and P's and Q's, and there's no more time for that. No more time for that. Not, not outright abuse is obviously not warranted and not needed, but directness and firmness and taking the gloves off and playing outside the rules a little bit is is probably needed. And when I say playing outside the rules, is naming people, shaming them. So there was a hospital in the southeastern suburbs that when this all started, they weren't caught the when so. People that are suffering severe mental health issues are put on a watch list and they, if they call up, if they're suffering a mental health breakdown, they call the number and they get put through to the hospital and then the hospital sends the CAT team out from there, yeah? Yep. Okay. When at the start of all this, for a long time, for months, at least a couple of months, the CAT teams were not being called out to homes of people having mental health breakdowns. It's disgusting. Now, you might say, oh, well, you know, they would know, well, then they might have it, you know, didn't want to spread anything. Well, if the cat team had a dressed in a full suit, put the gloves on, put a mask on, stood at someone's door or stood at their porch even and just got the person to stand in their doorway, how is that a risk? And it, was, it would have saved many lives. That would have saved lives. So the lack of leadership, and it's right from the front, the lack of leadership by the government and other government departments or corporation departments, sorry, because they don't care. They really don't care. They make a song and dance like they care, but it's a puppet show. Deep down, they really don't care. Now, there's a lot of good workers in the industry that do care, but management do not care. Do not care. And I've worked in this field for long enough, mate, and I've sat in enough meetings, education department meetings, health um, department meetings. I've sat in enough of those meetings with enough management to know that they don't, at the end of the day, they don't care. And all they're concerned with is, is the bottom line, is their budget, is their uh, bottom dollar. That's all they care about. And what coffee scroll goes best with their chai latte at their next meeting. I've seen it, I've seen it way too many times, mate. Now people might say that I'm being um, a bit harsh. No, no, that's the facts. Because I won't ignore the elephant in the room and I'll address matters as they are. And the education department has showed no leadership in this whatsoever in schools. Not one bit. They've left the schools out to dry and fend for themselves. Because there are a bunch of raving socialists in there who've just got an agenda. As simple as that. In 2016, and and this is something you can research yourself on the freedom of information. So it's quite there to research. In 2016 alone... The education department had 26 out of court law settlements. 26. That's two a month. That's two a month because they're all about not being in the papers. Now, that's a little bit off what we're trying to talk about here, but I just wanted to, if I could, Tim, just there's going to be a lot of people uh, concerned tomorrow about going out in public and being scared of fined about uh, not having a mask. Would it be a fair assumption to make, yeah? Yeah, there's a lot of uncertainty. The uh, the government's uh, oh guidelines on the the DHHS website. I, I might just do a screen share. Yeah. For for, for a moment. Uh, so uh, these are the the key points here. Uh, it's infants and children under the age of twelve are not required to wear a face covering uh, due to the risk of choking. It is not safe for them to wear a mask. But the previous advice from Brett Sutton on face covering said under uh, eighteen, and I know. he also said that scarves and bandanas don't protect you, but you can still use a scarf or bandana. That's legal to to cover your face with that. So is it about just seen to be doing something, or is it actually about Health, because there's no requirement for you to say yeah. wash your mask or whatever. Uh, that, that was the uh, that was the last. So it's about how do you control people? You confuse them. You, you fill them full of fear and you confuse them. And that's exactly what's happening with the website at the moment. That's exactly why the media are giving this message about what stage lockdown it is, because you get people confused and questioning. Oh, I don't understand this. So when you're confused and when you're fearful, you're more likely to conform. You're more likely to go along. And that is the whole thing. Because people right now, just that's a perfect example to use. Right now, when you're saying, oh, one minute says this, one minute, 
the normal person, when I say normal, people who are apathetic. Or just busy living their lives trying to get by. That's how I describe them. Yeah, which is why we've become so apathetic, Tim, and which is why that the corrupt the corruption has been. And I'll put my hand up and, and admit blame as well too. And I take more responsibility as that because I'm 52 years old. So I should have stuck my... I mean, look, I've been saying things for a long time. I've been researching this stuff for well over 20 years. But I should have been more proactive a long time ago. We, and that's part of the, that is part of the agenda. That is part of the agenda that's taken place. This has been planned out for a long, long time. A long, long time. This goes back to 1986 with the Australia Act, the biggest act of treason ever committed on this country. And by the way, anyone watching, that documentary is coming along well. My time's just been cons so much consumed with other things. Uh, I don't week. know about the documentary, so I'd like to know just a brief. Yeah, with a, uh, myself and another gentleman, uh, Barry, uh, filming a uh, documentary exposing the uh, act of trees and what uh, the 1986 Australia Act was. Um, so um, it'll, you'll, it'll make you sick to the stomach, but it goes right back to there. So my point is, um, I've sort of got off the track a little bit, but it's it's all designed for fear and control. And this is, as we know, Tim, this is no longer about a virus because the figures do not add up. Nothing makes sense. Now, the cases might have gone up. There's no transparency. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm, this is the most testing time in not only in this country but in the world that we've had for quite some time. Or people of your generation, I mean, people that have lived through wartime and, and all the rest of it. This country alone... This is probably the most testing time, arguably. So you need, within your leadership, you need transparency so that the community can have faith and comfort that the decisions you're making are true and correct. There's no transparency. What, why, what, out of the 300 and so, such and such cases, how many tested false positive? How many have recovered since then? How many are elderly? How, we want to know all that. There's no transparency. And when there's no transparency, it's general. It's always because you're hiding something. And if you're hiding something, that's disingenuous. So why should we have our lives dramatically controlled by disingenuous, dishonest people? Look, it's just logic, but we can't see logic these days, Tim, because we're so drawn to the drama, drawn to the emotion side of it. Life's pretty sound. This is one of the things I teach people in, in my teachings. It's like any decision is easy to make when you take the emotion out of it. What makes decisions hard is the emotion attached to it. So we've got a whole bunch of people right now dealing with living on emotion and not uh, logic. But what I wanted to do, um, I don't know, have you touched on um, people's rights in terms of dealing with the police and things like that tomorrow if they get harassed? For not wearing a mask, uh, I've I've spoken to uh, people such as uh, Nick Patterson from Empowerment uh, Solutions, so yeah. I'm familiar uh, with the with the the way to uh, yeah. respond. Uh, but well, I'll allow like allow you to uh, uh, re re reeducate the audience and myself. Yeah, well, hopefully most of the viewers watching tonight um, know as well too because. Nick Nick knows that side of things better than me, believe me. So uh, he's very, very knowledgeable. But just one of the messages I guarantee Nick would have told you is to keep it short. Don't engage in the conversation because that's what they want. Okay, am I under arrest? No, you're not. Okay, so I'm free to go. Have I committed a crime? What's the crime? Breaking the COVID laws. No, that's not a crime. They're, they're directions, not laws. Okay. May I see your ID? No, you may not. I have not really committed a crime. I have no obligation to give you my ID. I have not committed a crime, so I'm free to go. Thank you. They cannot arrest you, okay? Remind them of the ruling of Justice Stephen Kay in the Melbourne court, and it was uh, Hemingway versus the police, the DDP, okay? And remind them of the Justice Stephen Kay's ruling that uh, if a person not under arrest has no obligation to stop for police or answer their questions, the conferring on this is what Justice Stephen Kay said, and there is no statute that removes that right. 
the conferring of such a power on a police officer would be a substantial detraction from the fundamental freedoms which have been guaranteed to the citizen by the common law for centuries. This is from a Supreme Court justice in a Supreme Court. That's a higher authority than the police. So just remind them of that because you can only ever be apprehended or placed under arrest if you've committed a crime. For there to be a crime, there has to be a victim or an injured party or a violation of a contract. Neither three apply to not wearing a mask. And they have to prove the proof of burden is on them. If they expect people to hand, uh, um, walk around with doctor certificates, they're kidding themselves. Well, that's not clear but, at the moment. It, uh, it, uh, they, they don't even say if you have a reasonable excuse, are they going to say, papers, please, your medical certificate. You're supposed to carry yeah, that in your wallet. Where do you hear that? Yeah, I, I think everyone knows where Papers, Please is from. Yeah, exactly. And ring up and dob in a person not wearing a mask, ring up and dob in a Jew. Mm. Same, same thing. No offence to the Jewish people. I didn't mean that in a derogatory term, but just that was the expression used back then. So... Um, and also yeah. dividing the community as well. You had uh, children who dob in their, in their parents and... Uh, uh, this is thankfully in this second wave we've seen a lot less uh, I would say public uh, confrontations because I think the public are aware that this virus isn't as deadly as they were initially told but they're still accepting and sucking up this second Daddy. lockdown and say oh we've just got to wait for a vaccine or i suppose it's for for our uh benefit which is the absolutely worst attitude to to have just accept and say oh well government have got our best interests at heart no government is all about wanting to seem like they're doing the 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 right thing and they have a hero complex oh the police oh, i'm talking about the government have a hero complex oh well the government has got Especially in socialist governments. Well, they are. They're all globalists and they're all communists. I mean, you want to just listen to a gentleman, uh, Ricardo Bosa, who spent uh, with the Australian One Party, who spent, uh, you know, the best part of his life in the military. Um, yeah, ask him about that topic. But uh, it is full of globalists and it's a have, but we have been infiltrated. And that's what I said to you before, Tim. I feel. It's like people ask me why I do what I do. It's, it's not what I do, it's who I am. I've always helped people my whole life and I've been exposed to government corruption since I was 10 years old. When my father got run over by a group of young guys on a motorbike and they weren't charged because one of the uh, um, young fellas was a police sergeant's son at the local police station. So that all got swept under the carpet and the investigation didn't go any further. So I've dealt from that now. I don't need counselling. I'm fully fine with it. But what it's done is it's driven me. But what I just want to say is um, on the police, they work on fear. So when they come and ask you questions, they're trying to contract you as a corporation. Don't enter into their questions. They are fishing. They are trying to fish for responses so you step in into doing, into um, incriminating yourself, which you can't do in this regard, but they will keep fishing. It's their even inside. It's their inside term for things. Is what they joke with each other. You know, they, they go and fishing. It's it's a well known term they use with it, within the force. So, um, <laughs> and they'll do it all the time. And some of them are good at it because they've been at it for a while. Um, don't engage with it. You have got just as many. You've got more rights than the police have got because all the police are. What people get stuck on is. Oh, it's the law. No, 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 no. They just the passively people... accept that what they're being told uh, by the police is true and that they oh. have to comply. Exactly. Exactly. Because some person, some police officer might quote some act or whatever and go, oh, yeah, no, this, no, no, no. You ask them what, 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 uh, what section that acts in for starters and they can't tell you. Some of them can. All right, some of the ones that have actually researched, but keep, don't. I wouldn't advise getting into a, a knowledge debate because if you get someone does know a little bit, you'll, you'll end up uh, doing more harm than good for yourself. So keep it simple, keep it clear. Am I under arrest? No. Okay, has been a crime committed? No. Am I under arrest? No. So I'm free to go. Thank you very much, officer. I did not have to give you my details. Also, um, mentioned Justice Stephen Kane, the ruling from the uh, Supreme Court. 
November 2011, okay? Mention that you are in no obligation to stop if you have not committed a crime. Not wearing a mask in public is not a crime. I've got a health reason for not wearing one, officer. Where's your proof? I don't need it. If you're stating that, I, that what I'm saying is untrue, it is your burden of proof is on you to prove that it's untrue. And, and this is uh, another thing that annoys me about the well, stay-at-home orders, that they, the police are asked to use discretion, which if you're out exercising, they're the judge of whether it's exercise or they're the judge of whether you're out shopping for essentials yeah. and they can. Well, it's subjective. Now, now, when this all first started, now this is where they use, like, just because this is annoys me as well too. Sometimes I overhear people saying, oh, well, Andrew said, Screw what Andrew said. He's a compulsive liar and he's a raving sociopath. Like, he doesn't care about you. And he just gets up there and lies. He's, this is a, he's a power tripper and this is just a game for him to see how far he can control people. That's all this is about for this sick, pathetic yeah. freak. And, and especially with all these threats about, oh, I might need to go further. Oh, I might yeah. need to... You know, we're not exactly. children. He got up in that first stage of the lockdown and said that you could not sit. That was a lie. That was a lie. There was nowhere in the stay-at-home directions or there was nowhere in the restricted activities directions that it says you couldn't sit. He also lied about travelling kilometres. He go, oh, you can only travel a few suburbs. Remember when the young learner driver early on got fined for being too there, far there, There's nothing... In the, what is it, uh, the second lockdown, it says unreasonable travel. Again, a that's subjective. Exactly. Now, also, what I will, this going out of your suburb is nonsense. You can go. Because uh, yeah. As part of the clauses, now just sort of read you this, um, reasons to leave premises, and this is valid, leaving premises to obtain necessary goods or services a person may leave the premises. Now, they talk about the four reasons, right? There's not. There's more than four reasons, about six. And one of those is uh, clause six, leaving premises to obtain necessary goods or services, section B, goods and services for health and medical purposes. Health, mental health is a massive issue in society. The chief uh, health officer, sorry, the uh, Minister for Health come out last week and said we had a thousand um suicides i need to travel out to my space where i feel well for my mental health and you can go and uh try and dispute that officer so you know there's you know work purposes as well too now i had a conversation with a lady last night and she was under the assumption that work purposes meant paid work no 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 so don't let them try and lie to you either, because some police will some of the ones that are born into this world Okay, so um, the work is, just let me read that for you, mate. Um, we'll do that in here. It basically says for work or volunteer, um, for work purposes, that means uh, paid and volunteer. So volunteering counts as working as well too. Now, some people work about two or three jobs these days. They need to work after hours and on weekends as well too. Some people do. So once again, Okay, so if you need to go and do that because you are working either paid or voluntary, because voluntary work is work, um, especially right now in the community where people need help, need assistance, um, and you can travel for compassionate grounds as well too. You might need to travel to someone who's having a really bad day and having a massive breakdown there by themselves. You're not going to leave them by themselves. Of course you're going to go and drive, even if it's over to the other side of the city. And no one's got any right to stop you. Yeah, that's exactly right. I mean, this whole lockdown is about health. So you're you're going to... And for all this talk about mental health and domestic violence, for example, you know what would solve that, but not having the lockdown. Exactly. Exactly. Mate, it's been a pleasure. Oh, I've certainly appreciated you uh, making time. And you mentioned uh, Facebook is uh, is starting to or shadow ban you. They 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 took down the the ninety nine percent unite uh, main group as it uh, yesterday and uh, banned uh, Fanos uh, from live streaming for 
seven days. Uh, they've they he's is currently using a a backup account. Uh, uh, Rafael Fernandez uh, he he hasn't been uh, affected uh, though he was yeah. meant for the group. No, I spoke to Raf. I spoke to Raf about it yesterday and uh, gave him a couple of uh, suggestions. So uh, yeah, mm. but mate. Could I just personally thank you for what you're doing as well too? Because you are massive in terms of getting people in. Everyone that jumps on and puts their head out there like you are is brave. Okay, so well done. And that's brave, mate, because you know, there's no doubt you'll, you'll cop ridicule. And going forward, as this thing progresses, no doubt you'll cop ridicule. But you've managed to, to you know, it's, well, that's just part of it. And, mate, good more power to you. And thank you very much. Thanks, Craig. I've been a oh, freedom activist for, for many years, so all the, the, the hits that I've got, they've just made me stronger, and I've noticed that yeah. with uh, uh, Thanos and, and Raf. And uh, just before you go, it was a coincidence that uh, this uh, hit piece appeared in the, the Daily Mail and the Australian yeah. on Thanos and Raf, but they blurred they your face, face out. <laughs> were, were, are they scared of you or something? <laughs> But then, Mate, I, 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 someone sent me that and I, I absolutely pissed myself laughing because it's like, well, mate, I know it's not a good looking head, but they didn't have to go to that extreme. <laughs> it's pretty funny. Yeah, but they, they call, what was the headline? They said the sick online virus deniers. Well, what's a uh, virus denier? Yeah. What's a virus denier? Is that uh, like a cl denier? Mm. Uh, yeah. Now, uh, they're, they're gonna, the people not wearing masks tomorrow, they're calling them anti-maskers. They're just as bad. An anti-maskers. Yes. Right. So now I'm an anti-vaxxer and an anti-masker. Mm. Well, we did have that news about that Oxford uh, uh, University vaccine trial. It looks very promising, but then, well, how is it going to be administered? And if it's administered, are they going to give people their freedom back? I don't see that being the, the silver bullet. No, that's a, mate, that is a, uh, yeah, that's, a, that's going to be another bridge that, we, um, that I'm preparing for as well too. And um, it's, so the plan is, all right, before I go, so the globalist plan is to get rid of all the states around the country. And you can see them slowly starting to try and do that now with blocking the border. It's all, this is just a test run. What people need to understand is it is a test run for what is going to happen later. This is a test run. The virus, as we've established, it's no killer virus. This is just a, it's a smoke screen to be used to assert more control over us to execute their Agenda 2130 plan. It's as simple as that. So, um, where was I going with that? Um, yeah, it's going to get a lot, mate. It's, it, this is just a test run and it will get a lot worse unless we uh, make change. But that's what people like yourself and me and Thanos and Raph and the Romeo up in Sydney and uh, um, a whole bunch of other people around the country are doing some fantastic work. But uh, how would you feel, Tim and viewers, how would you feel about a platform that you were, could be live streamed with alternative news and news that exposes the truth. How would you feel about that? Would that be a great thing? Oh, everyone uh, would love it. And there, there's certainly uh, a lot of people who are already working to that goal because your, ti your time on, on Facebook uh, is, is numbered just like it was for the Patriot Movement uh, beforehand. Same with uh, Twitter uh, as well. And I know that there are uh, some alternatives such as uh, Telegram, Parler, Gab and, and Bitch. Oh, no, on a much bigger scale than that. And uh, look, uh, I, I think it's much needed. So, um, but it's funny how things just manage to pop up out of nowhere. Sometimes they're not so good. Sometimes they're uh, absolutely amazing. So, uh, I don't know, maybe keep a look out for something like that uh, on the cards coming up, mate. Yep, definitely. Uh, so if you are still allowed on, on Facebook, uh, like Craig's uh, page, uh, no consent, I do get the notifications for it uh, still. So 
and I still get refs uh, notifications uh, as yeah, well. There's no consent for We Are Young and Free. If the page gets taken down, guys, well, firstly, Facebook are going to have a massive lawsuit against them because um, what they don't realise is in the oh, – hang on, that's not that – um, in the Charter of Human Rights um, and Responsibilities, the Victorian Act. one. <laughs> yeah, yeah they, they they passed that. The was that the Brax government uh, when uh, uh, human rights were actually cool uh, to the progressives. Yeah. Wow. Uh, they they're actually finding it to be a hindrance now because they're like, oh, we can't actually force people to take a COVID test now because of that pesky charter. Correct, correct. So, um, and also uh, Facebook uh, can't be censoring people because they're actually breaking Victorian legislation by doing so, So, which is liable to be sued. So it's pretty crystal clear. And I don't care what their little terms and conditions say, their terms and conditions can't override local laws. Well, that's why they're based in Ireland or whatever. They, 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 they try to... Uh, being a, a globalist a organization, they, they use that to get out of any sort uh, of local laws. Yeah, because any, any decent lawyer will rip that to shreds in a courtroom. Well, that's the key, getting those decent lawyers. Yeah, exactly. Well, I think even, uh, who was the bloke from the castle? What was his name? Uh, Derek Kerrigan, but sadly, that is not a true story. Oh, yeah. Oh, uh, uh, it's, I can't remember. Yeah. Dennis could try that case and still win. It's mm. that watertight. It's not funny. You can't do it, Facebook. Well, I know that uh, Laura Luma uh, over in the, the US, she's uh, taking uh, Facebook to court over deeming her a dangerous individual. She's a, uh, she's a fighter and revealing uh, a lot of uh, inconsistencies in that in that policy. So she's shown it yeah. can be done. So. She'll win. She'll win. And I hope she gets elected to Congress as well this November in Florida. Oh, I would love to see Candace Owen in, in Congress as well too, actually. So she's fantastic. So yeah. Maybe in a few years. But uh, Laura Luma and Enrique Terrio, Proud Boys Chair in, in Florida, if they can both get into the next Congress, that would shake things up. Oh, I think it will. I think it will. But they've got, those guys have got a lot to get through right now at the moment as well, too. But at least they have a much stronger constitution than what we do. So, yeah, true. Mate, love your work. Love what you do. Thank you so much for having me on. I'm so humbled. And thank you to everyone for your support. Every message that you send me, uh, every comment um, gives me it gives me real, it adds a lot of fuel to the fire. So uh, thanks heaps. And uh, we'll keep fighting. There's no other option. What people need to understand is get comfortable being uncomfortable. Every day is a challenge. Every day is a struggle. We are up for it. We are up for it. You can be tougher than what you people. We can be tougher than what we think we can be. Well, that's what's uh, inspired me about the, the new freedom activists such as yourself, Thanos and, and Raf. The, the government, they can beat some people down, but there will always be more people who will rise up again. This government is not capable of beating someone like me down, mate. Not capable. Because I don't get intimidated by cowards. It's as simple as that. I don't get intimidated by anyone, but especially cowards. Mate, I've got to go. Yeah. Time. I'm sorry to cut it short. Thank you so much. Um, and keep up. Keep fighting, my brother. Keep fighting. Doing a great job. Thanks you as well. You're welcome. i right, see ya. See you, mate. Thanks for tuning in to Wilmsfront. Visit timwilms.com or Rational Rise TV to view the archive of episodes. And keep visiting theunshackled.net to view all our shows. And to keep up with the latest real news and analysis.